Hey guys, Mr. V here, and in this video we're going to go on over some practice problems on identifying physical properties, chemical properties, physical changes, and chemical changes. So if you're having some trouble um, distinguishing the difference between these, hopefully this video will help you. Now there are a lot of problems here, so I'm not going to go through every single one, but I'll go through a good amount of them. Uh, hopefully this video won't be too long, um, you know, I'll try to keep it under maybe about 10-15 minutes, but again, just a lot of practice here. All right. This first part here says classify the following each as either chemical change, chemical property, physical change, or physical property. So the main difference between a change and a property is that a change means something is actually happening and it's of course turning into something different or you're changing what it looks like or its shape. And a property is usually like you're testing something or it tells you that that, that, that object has the ability to do something but you haven't done it yet, okay? All right, let's take a look at number two. Um, silver tarnishing. So this is basically saying that silver is going from its usual silver color to its tarnished color. It's kind of a, it's not, it's not as shiny. It's a little bit more um, matte looking, meaning that it's, it's not it's shiny. It's kind of dull. Um, it could be kind of grimy. So silver tarnishing. This is going to be a chemical change. Um, after the, the silver has gone from its shiny looking color to tarnishing, um, it's actually reacting with oxygen in the air. So it's basically like it's rusting. You're making a new material. And the only way to get rid of it is you have to use a chemical cleaner to like clean it off and get rid of it. Or maybe like a, you gotta like scrape it off basically. So uh, magnetizing steel. So this is taking steel and making it magnetic. Uh, maybe it doesn't, isn't magnetic to begin with and you're making it magnetic. Now afterwards, it, once it's magnetic, it's still steel. Okay? You haven't made a new material. It now just has the ability to essentially attract magnets. Um, so this is a physical change, okay? not chemical. Um, the silver one was chemical because the, that tarnished material is actually a whole new material. It's not silver anymore. Um, it doesn't look the same. It doesn't act the same. Whereas steel, of course, it still looks like steel. Um, it's still hard and, and all that stuff. It certainly is magnetic now, but still steel. Shortening, melting. So shortening is um, is like butter, okay, basically. Um, so if you melt butter, that is of course going to be a physical change. You're just changing the, uh, the the physical state of it, but it's it's still butter, right? You just went from solid to liquid, so. Um, combustible, so if something has the ability to be lit on fire, that is a chemical, that is a chemical property. Um, it's not a change because we haven't actually lit it on fire yet, but it has the ability to be lit on fire and it's chemical because if you were to light it on fire, it's probably not gonna be the same material anymore, right? If you like were to light a piece of paper on fire, Afterwards, that paper is not paper, right? It's ash. It's it looks different. It behaves different. A different color. It's brittle. It's you know falls apart easily. So, you know, combustible is a property, and then it's chemical because to test it, you have to actually change the material into something new. Wood burning. Okay, so just kind of talked about this. This is a chemical change. If you were to burn a piece of wood, it would not be wood afterwards, right? After you've burned it, it's now ash. It's not wood anymore. Um, and it's chemical because you're making a new material and, um, you know, there's a lot of signs to indicate that you're making a new material. Biggest sign, of course, is transfer of energy. It gives off heat. Um, brittleness. If something is brittle or not, that is a physical property. Okay, so it's not a change because we're not, of course, doing anything to it. We're just, you know, determining is it brittle or not. So that's a property. And two, it's physical because if, if it were to be brittle, right, if you hit it with a hammer and it broke apart into pieces, um, it's still going to be the same material. It's just probably in smaller pieces now. So you haven't changed it into something new. Uh, and then baking bread, this is a chemical change. And this is because when you bake bread, beforehand it's dough and it, you know, is it looks different and stuff. You probably were to eat it and it wouldn't probably taste very good. Um, but after you bake the bread, it comes out and it's now a solid and there's a, it smells different. It tastes good, right? It tastes different. 
Um, there's gases that form because the bread rises. So there's gases that form inside the bread and, and are given off. So there's all kinds of things that happen to indicate that we have a new material afterwards. Therefore, it's chemical. Okay. Identify the following as being true or false uh, to the left of the sentence. So we'll, st we'll just do the even ones here again. So number 16, a chemical change means a new substance with new properties was formed. That is true. Okay. So chemical changes means you're making new material and typically means you have new substance, new properties. That's true. Um, number 18, when platinum is heated, then cooled to its original state, we say this is a physical change. So if you were to heat something and then cool it back down, right? So you heat it and you melt it, for example, and then you cool it back down back to a solid. Yeah, that's going to be a physical change. We are, um, we're changing physical state and we're not making any new material. So that is true. Number 20, when citric acid and baking soda mix, carbon dioxide is produced and the temperature decreases. This must be a chemical change. So this is also going to be true because um, you're producing a gas from a liquid and a solid. Okay, citric acid is a liquid, baking soda is a solid. So you're making a gas, carbon dioxide, and the temperature decreases, which means there's a transfer of energy. That means that it's taking in energy from the surrounding air, okay? So that's why the temperature goes down. So this must be a chemical change, okay? Um, this is true. Okay. Um, identify each of the following as physical or chemical. Um, number 22, so again, we'll do even still. A sugar cube dissolves. Okay, that's gonna be physical. Sugar cube will dissolve. The sugar is still sugar. It's just now in smaller pieces in the water. So this is physical. Number 24, burning coal for a barbecue. All right, so if you burn coal, um, it's going to start, first start, it's gonna be black, right? You, you light it on fire. It gives off heat, so transfer of energy. Um, typically it's gonna glow, so also gonna give off light. And afterwards, it's gonna change color. It might be black to begin with, but afterwards it's gonna be white or gray. And after, it's also not flammable anymore. So we've now lost its combustibility, its, its, its property of being combustible, right? Beforehand, it was able to be lit on fire. Afterwards, it's not anymore. So this is gonna be a chemical change. All right, um, these ones here are on classifying whether something is a substance, an element, a compound, a solution, a homogeneous mixture, or a heterogeneous mixture. And just to simplify it a little bit, remember that a solution and a homogeneous mixture are the same thing. Those solutions, I guess, are usually liquid. Okay, it's kind of the only difference. Um, homogeneous mixtures and solutions are the same thing, but a homogeneous mixture can also be a solid, and a lot of times you don't call solid solutions. We usually just call liquid homogeneous mixture solutions. But anyway, I'll, I'll just stick to homogeneous solution or homogeneous mixture for everything here. All right, number two, salt. Um, salt has a chemical formula. Um, it is known as sodium chloride, as most of you may know, and has a chemical formula of NaCl. This is a compound. It's made of two elements, sodium and chlorine, okay? Um, number four, soil. Ooh, all right. So this is a little bit of a tricky one, but soil um, is made out of a lot of different things, mostly dead material, dead plant material, dead animal material, all kinds of just dead stuff that's turned into soil. Um, it doesn't have like a chemical formula or anything. So this is going to be a mixture, um, but it's going to be a heterogeneous mixture, mainly because if you look at soil, you're going to see all kinds of stuff in there. It's not like, you know, it all looks the same. You can definitely pick out pieces of material in soil. So that is a heterogeneous mixture. Um, number six, pure air. This one's a little bit tricky, okay? Now air, of course, is colorless. You can't see it. And it's not an element, okay? There's, there's no air on the periodic table. It's not an element. And it's also not a compound. There's no chemical formula for air either. Okay, air is a mixture of gases, primarily oxygen gas, nitrogen gas, carbon dioxide gas. Okay, there are other gases in air too, but it's a mixture of all these gases that are colorless and it's not the same everywhere because air here in Minnesota is gonna be very different from air like at the top of you know Mount Everest um, 
Here in Minnesota, auction levels are probably pretty high. At the top of Mount Everest, auction levels are much lower, way less auction there. So air does not is not the same everywhere around the world. It changes, which means it cannot be a compound and it can't be an element, okay? Because if it was the same everywhere, if it was an element or compound, it'd be the same everywhere, and it's not. So air is a mixture, but it's gonna be a homogeneous mixture because if you look at air, you can't see that there's different parts to it. It just looks the same everywhere. All right, um, number eight, gold. This one's pretty simple. Gold is on the periodic table, so it's an element. Um, number 10, just like number not, number eight, uh, oxygen also is gonna be an element. It's on the periodic table, has a chemical symbol for it, so. Number 12, salt water. Okay, now water, just pure water, is H2O. Salt water, of course, has salt in it, which we've dissolved in the water. And salt water, if you ever looked at it, most of the time, as long as it's not tons and tons of salt, it just looks like regular water. It's just, it's see-through, okay? So this is a mixture because there's two things that are mixed together and salt water is not the same everywhere either, right? Some salt water is much saltier than other salt water is. So it's different around the world. So it's not the same everywhere. It's makes it a mixture um, and it's gonna be a homogeneous mixture because you can't tell that there's salt in there if you look at it, right? Everything just looks like it's clear liquid. So this is going to be a homogeneous mixture or a solution. If we wanted to uh, write it as a solution, that would also be fine. Um, silver, this one's pretty simple. This is an element. It is on the periodic table. Um, apple pie, ooh, that sounds really good right now, actually. Apple pie, so this one is going to be a mixture because it's, of course, all kinds of stuff, right? You've got apples and you got cinnamon and you have sugar and, you know, whatever. I don't know how to make an apple pie, but all kinds of stuff. And if you look at it, you can see all those different pieces in there. So it's clearly a mixture. It's not an element and it's not a compound. Um, and it's going to be a heterogeneous mixture because you can see the different parts. Number 18, sugar water. Basically, just like number 12, salt water. It's just sugar now, but it's the same exact concept. The sugar is dissolved in the water and uh, you just can't see it, but it's still there and you can separate it out. And it's not the same everywhere because you could you know, have more sugar in one glass of water, less sugar in another glass. So it's clearly different, but all right. Um, number 19, a chocolate chip cookie. Oh. Man, also sounds really good right now. I haven't had lunch yet, so maybe this was a bad idea to do this video before lunch. Anyway, chocolate chip cookie. Uh, <clears throat> chocolate chip cookie. Um, this is, of course, going to be a mixture. It's not an element, and it's not a compound. And it's going to be a heterogeneous mixture because you can see that there are chocolate chip pieces to it, and then there's obviously the cookie part to it, right? So it's not the same everywhere. So this is going to be a heterogeneous mixture. Okay. So I think that's probably good for now, but you know, I'd like you to go through and finish the rest of these ones on your own. And if of course you hit one that you're really, really confused on, let me know and I can help you, right? Either email me, reach out to me uh, in class, or you know, we could meet up and talk Google Meet or something. So, all right, moving on. Um, we're gonna classify the following properties as either physical or chemical by checking the appropriate column. Okay, um, so we'll just do like every other. Okay, blue color, physical or chemical? Um, well, if it's blue in color, can you observe that without changing the material? Yeah, you just look at it, right? So that is a physical property. Um, we'll just put an X here, I guess. So physical property, easily observable, don't need to change the material in anything new. Remember that chemical properties, in order to test them, you have to change it into something new. Okay, flammability. So if, it, if it's flammable, can you light it on fire? Um, if you were to light it on fire, it's gonna be a whole new material afterwards because once you burn something, it changes into something different. So this is a chemical property. Boils at 100 degrees. So boiling means you're going from liquid to gas. Um, if you boil something and you go from liquid to gas, is it still the same material? So let's think about water. If you boil a, you know, a thing of water, it goes from liquid water to now water in its gaseous state. Is it still water? Yeah. So this is change in physical state, which is always gonna be a physical property. Sour taste, so if it tastes sour, and you lick something and you go, ooh, that's sour. Um, can you do that without changing what the material is made out of? Yeah, that is a physical property. Uh, exploding fireworks, so something goes when it blows up. Is it still gonna be the same material after it's exploded? No, 
Okay, an explosion is usually when you have a bunch of gases that form and they expand very quickly in a closed container. And the container, of course, can't hold these gases as they expand. And so the container ruptures and it blows up into a bunch of pieces. So this is going to be a chemical property. Um, you're, you're not going to have the same thing afterwards that you started with and you're producing gases. As well as usually there's heat that's produced, which is transfer energy. So reacts with water to form gas. Okay, so we're forming a gas. That usually is an indication we have a chemical change, so chemical property. Um, hardness, if something is hard or soft. This is going to be physical property. You could easily test that just by scratching it, right? Scr trying to scratch it with your nail or, or something like that. Um, and after you've scratched, maybe, maybe you have scratched it, maybe you haven't scratched it. Either way, it's still the same material afterwards. You're not changing the material. So physical property. Luster, it's shine. Is it shiny or not? You can look at it and go, oh, is it shiny or not? You can easily observe that without changing what the material is made out of. So also physical property. Okay, the last ones here, um, identify each of the following as an example of a physical property or a chemical property. A banana is yellow. So this is like color. We just talked about this in the previous one. This would be a physical property because you can just simply take a look at it and you're not changing the material. It's easily observable physical property. Barium melts at 725 Celsius. This is also gonna be a physical property because you are changing it from solid to liquid, but it's still barium, okay? You could then take that liquid, which is really hot, cool it down back into solid barium, still barium. So you're not changing what the material is made out of. A diamond is the hardest natural substance. This is also a physical property. Um, you could test this out just by trying to scratch a bunch of things with it. And if it does scratch things, it's still a diamond. If it doesn't scratch things, it's still a diamond, right? You're not changing what it's made out of. A bar of lead is more easily bent than is a bar of aluminum of the same size. So this again is gonna be a physical property. Whether you bend a bar of lead or you bend a bar of aluminum, it's still lead, it's still aluminum, it's now just in a different shape. Okay, you're not making any new substances. Um, an apple will turn brown if, I think it's supposed to be if, left in oxygen. So this is a chemical property. If you take a bite of an apple and you put it down on the table and you go walk away and you come back later, it's gonna be brown looking, right? And that brown stuff, if you take a bite out of it, it's not gonna taste the same as it did before, right? It's not gonna taste quite as good. It might be a little bit mushier. Clearly it's something new. It's not the same material as the apple was before you took a bite out of it because beforehand it might've been sweet and, and nice and crisp and now it's kind of like not so sweet and it's a little bit more soggy. So this is gonna be a chemical property. You're making a new material. All right, and then number 12, acid in tomato sauce can corrode aluminum foil. So if you put tomato sauce on a piece of aluminum foil, it might like start to make the aluminum foil like more shiny. It's, it's corroding the surface. This is gonna be a chemical change. What's happening is you're actually stripping the surface of the aluminum off, which is aluminum oxide, and you're exposing the aluminum underneath, which is more shiny. Okay, so this is actually a chemical change. You're, you're actually making a new material here. So chemical property. Okay, that is it. Um, I know I didn't go over all of them, but like I said, hopefully that gives you some, some um, clarity on some of this stuff. And as always, though, if you have any questions, reach out to me by email, um, you know, talk to me in class, or we could always do a Google Meet or something, but make sure that you get that confusion cleared up because you need to know this stuff for your test. All right, guys, I'm Mr. B, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.